and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So students, warm welcome to all of you. I extend my greetings and let's begin our today's topic. So before we start today's topic, this, this topic is all about a poem. And so today we'll be studying a poem about an, and it's written by a very world-renowned poet. Now what are we going to study in this topic? Let's discuss it further. But before I have some activity for you, I decided this time not to start with a topic but rather with an activity. And what's better than starting an activity with a worksheet? So here we are. There are riddles and then there are something else. So let's start. So now the first is it is tall, it is brown and yellow, it has a long neck what it is i think tall and brown can only be a giraffe so giraffe is the correct answer it's long and thin it has no legs it has a long tongue what is it it is long okay and it is thin fine but it doesn't have legs oh my god so which type of animal is it i think the animal is snake so let's mark snake. It has, it is big. It has a long noise and big ears. It is gray. Now it is big and noise. It is elephant. It lives in the sea. Now we are left with only three options. Let's see what can we find further. It has sharp teeth. It is dangerous. Now squirrel doesn't live in the sea. So it isn't dangerous. Same with panda, it doesn't live in the sea, so it isn't dangerous. So, I think they are talking about shark. So, shark is the correct option. So, any idea, any guesses what are we trying to study in today's topic? Something related to animals. So, our today's poet about whom which we are going to discuss today is Muriel L. Sohn. It's Muriel L. Sohn. It's also known as Sun, Sun, S-O-N, Sun, An, An. So, Muriel L. Sun. Now, okay, now let's move forward. So, A Garden Snake by Muriel L. Sun. Now, Muriel Sun is a famous author and a poet. Now, here we are getting to know about the details about the author and the poet. His literary work is renowned worldwide. Now, for example, he's a very famous poet and an author who is regarded as one of the biggest authors throughout the world. Explanation. He was born on 31 November, October 1913. Okay, 1913, I think it's during the First World War. He died on uh, February 23rd, 1990. Okay, great. He lived more than 80 years. The Garden Snake is one of his most famous poem of all times. Okay, so today whatever we are going to study today is one of the most famous. The poem is about a snake and its effects on humans. Okay, something interdisciplinary, something science and some English literature. He also describes how majestic these living beings look. So now what author and poet is trying to tell about this poem? That this is one of his greatest poem of all times. The poem is about the snake and how snake has its effects on humans. He is also saying that by describing that how majestic these living beings look. I mean how big, how huge they look. Now, students, we have studied, I think, more than 20 authors discussed about them. So, can you tell me who is your favorite author? I love authors who describe about the natural beauty. Uh, William Wordsworth and then we have uh, authors such as, you know, um, Robert Frost. Okay, so Robert Frost. And William Wordsworth.
okay so these two are my favorite authors of all time and the reason why i have chosen these authors are they are regarded as one of the biggest so the reason why i have chosen these authors are because they describe the beauty of nature how beautiful nature is and the way they portray through these poems using such beautiful adjectives is what makes them stand alone from the crowd now let's start our today's topic think name of the poem garden snake very easy garden snake is the poet's poem's name now garden snake is one of the most famous poem of all times of which author rabindranath tagore muriel elson robert frost john dunn it's john dunn or muriel elson yes it's the correct answer is muriel elson now think what do you call a place where we find flowers and plants okay okay there can be many places we can also say that they they are found in garden uh we can also find them in the jungle okay we can also find them in the forest okay we can also find them in the so yes now so and we can also also mention that uh, we can find flowers and plants in the ecosystem in the hills so name some creatures that we see in the garden let's think we can see birds we can see animals we can see snake we can see a rabbit we can see worms we can see butterfly name a reptile that has got no legs now only a reptile that falls in the category of reptiles which has got no legs is now other than our snake what do you call a snake that is usually found in garden now a snake that is found in a garden is known as garden snake as simple as that okay garden snake so before wasting any further time let's start our today's topic and today's poem now garden snake by muriel elson now have you ever seen a snake fighting a mongoose or uh, getting into a hole or swimming in the river so have you ever seen a snake fighting a mongoose okay now before we proceed students mongoose is a type of animal yes that resembles bear but it is a uh, you know smaller than a bear or getting into a hole or swimming in the river mm getting into a hole we have seen but swimming in the river not at all possible everyone almost everyone believes that snakes are dangerous some are some most are not read this poem on a harmless garden snake let's read and find out what mariel elson is trying to tell is it okay or not now i saw a snake and ran away some snakes are dangerous they say but mother says that it is kind and good and eats up insects for his food so when he wiggles in the grass i'll stand beside him and watch him pass and tell myself there's no mistake it's just a harmless garden snake so uh, what's the rhyming scheme first of all we shall immediately observe the rhyming scheme let's see away a say a good okay b food b grass c pass d mistake d snake d and this should be c actually by mistake i wrote here d okay 
So basically the rank scheme of this poem is A, A, B, B, C, C and D, D. Now let's analyze it one by one. I saw a snake and ran away. Now here I is referred to as Muriel Son and son and she's saying that when she saw a snake she ran away. Some snakes are dangerous they say. Now who are they as referred to? They might be her friends, family member, relatives or cousins. Now, now I is the poet because she's not mentioning any name so we can assume that she's a poet. But mother says that kind is good and eats up insects for his food. But now her mother has something very contradictory. While on the one hand some people are saying that snakes are dangerous. But while on the other hand her mother is saying no that kind is good. Now that kind means who? Snake. Snake is good. Why? She is also not mentioning her answer in the next line and eats up insects for his food now they, they they are good why because they are eating up insects for his own food they are not using anything else so they are using insects for his food so their diet mainly comprises of insects so when he wiggles in the grass now wiggle is moving forward now have you seen a snake na, 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 na. like this in a zigzag pattern now when the snake wiggles in the grass I'll stand aside and watch him pass. Now author is saying that when the snake will wiggle in the grass, she'll stand aside. She'll not go to near him. She'll not go near him. She'll just stand aside the snake and she'll watch him pass into this direction. And tell myself, there is no mistake. It's not a mistake to watch a snake pass. It's just a harmless garden snake. Yes, so now students what the matter is. Now we have often been told by our parents, our relatives, our friends. Don't touch unintentionally. Don't harm animals. Don't harm a snake. Don't touch a dog. It might bite you. It might, you know, bite you and all those stuff. But students, the actual fact is that unless and until you, you know, you do something wrong to them, they are never going to do anything to you. Oh. Yes, they are not going to do anything to you unless and until you start the war from your end. Now, pronunciation drill. So, there were many words which I felt that were important to have better pronunciations. So, I, you know, started with this. So, let's see how can we done, do it. Now, so I felt that these should be and, added. So, I made it. Now, it's da us dangerous but is it pronounced like that no so let's divide and divide so it's dangerous dangerous er, er, er. now ger will be at er so dangerous 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 now second is Two words. Wiggles. 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 Now we and girls. We girls. We girls. It's not wiggles. Now G will not be pronounced as G. Rather to pronounce as G. 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 Fine. Now. Harmless. Harmless harmless it's not harmless 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 now few people would like to pronounce it as harmless and few people would like to pronounce it as harmless so harmless and harmless both are fine and accepted now muriel elson mu m u mu real L, S O N, Sun and N E. So it's, it's pronounced as Muriel L Sun. Muriel L Sun. Now, last one is Author. Author. So when we combine it, it's Author. Author. Oh, oh. You will come as Oh, Author. Fine. 
let's now move forward now let's have some reflection based questions to discuss because ultimately this is going to increase your critical understanding the poet ran away due to the presence of a chameleon a monkey a snake or a beehive so the poet ran away due to the presence of a chameleon no monkey no snake yes because the title resembles a garden snake beehive there is no mention on beehive what does the poet mean by there is no snake now the poet mean that there is no snake means the snake won't bite there is no harm in standing there that there are some snakes that can be made that everything is correct now there is no mistake means that there is no harm in standing and seeing the snake now seeing this snake pass okay like if i am trying to draw snake and if it's author standing over here and if he seeing it pass then there's no harm you can see na fine now word exposition again now make a uh, meaning from these sentences now the snake meaning is snake because it's an animal wiggles wiggles means to move like this like this in this direction now snake i saw a big snake in my garden yesterday now wiggles snakes are the reptiles that only wiggles now harmless that means they will not make you afraid that they are not not dangerous so harmless that means they are not dangerous so let's uh, make a sentence with harmless we can touch a shark it's an harmless creature you know we can play with dolphins they are very harmless yeah insects insects are worms so we usually see a lot of insects in the rainy season during the rainy season lot of insects come out of their molds okay i hope this is clear to you now let's move forward let's discuss some fun facts about the snake because it's world snake day so let's see now snakes they are found on every continent of the world except antarctica now students what is antarctica and where is antarctica located we must be familiar with this antarctica yes now if this is the earth this is the equator this is the north pole and this is the south pole now these are temperate zones and these are torrid zones now now north pole has arctic now south pole has antarctic now in this in, in this portion the snakes are not found in these continents antarctica continents where there is very very cold you know when there are cold extreme cold so snakes are not found over there snakes can open their mouths up to 150 degrees now try to open your mouth let's observe how how broad can you open it So snakes can open their mouths up to 150 degrees, allowing them to eat things that are 75 to 100% bigger than their own size. Now, if this is a snake and if it's more than 100% of this its size, they can even eat them. I wasn't aware. Just now, now is shocking. Yes, no wonder how snakes have such a huge mouth and they can even swallow a man, even a human being. Yes I hope you have you know seen those uh, animated movies such as Jurassic Park yeah okay and then snakes have internal ears but not external ones so snakes they don't have ears externally that is situated there outside but internal ears that are inside their body which we are which is not clear to us 
Now, according to you, do you find that snakes are dangerous? Let's have a discussion on this. Let's have a small discussion. Now, here we can see the snakes are looking so cute and so beautiful and pretty and so innocent. Innocent only in this picture. But in reality, are they? No. Why are they dangerous? Because they sting us. They sting us. That's not. Then they hiss us. And when they hiss us, the poison of their venom. Now the poison of the venom from their tongue. That is very dangerous for our body. Yes. And they can even eat a human being alive. So they have that capacity to swallow that human being by opening their mouth 150 degrees. Yes. Now. Now what's the theme and the moral of the poem? So now with the help of this poem, what author is giving us what social morale? Now, the moral is, the message of the poem, Guardian Snake by Muriel Elson, is that snakes are not that dangerous and harmful as we humans think. Definitely, we are not actually trying to become friendly and nice to them. Rather, we are getting scared from them. And because of the scary nature, it is even thought that, okay, they are this, they are that. We should know the entire story. We should also give them time. Time to go and stand is beside them and then they will pass. Yes? And some are very harmless and only eat insects as a food. Now some animals that are found basically in gardens. That's why the author has mentioned about the garden snake. They are very harmful. So what is their diet? Their diet is comprised of insects and their food. Yes? Hence, we should not be afraid of them. This is the moral of the poem that author is trying to tell us that they are very harmless, innocent creatures and we shouldn't be afraid of them. Now, MCQ. It's time for some MCQ. The poet learns a lesson to hit the snake, stand quietly, run away, wait for the guest. Hit the snake? Mm -hmm. We haven't come across this word. Stand aside quietly. This might be Run away? Uh, no, 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 no. Earlier he used to run away, but then he learned a lesson. And which lesson was there? Uh, was, was it to wait for the guest? Absolutely not. So the correct answer is stand beside a site quietly. So here we are, the recapitulation part. So today we have discussed a very beautiful poem by Muriel Elson that is def uh, telling us about snakes. How they can be your friends, not friends basically, but they are not as harmless and danger, harmful and dangerous as we humans think. So we should also give them time. Okay, now the garden snake. We studied about pronunciation drill. We discussed so many different words having different meanings. We made sentences with them and also included a lot of phonetics, you know, phonetic sounding also. Secondly, reciting the poem, rhyming and schemes. Now, rhyme scheme was A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. I'll mention it over here in case you forget. A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. Now, why are snakes so dangerous? Actually, snakes are not that dangerous. They are not harmful. Okay, there might be snakes that are dangerous that are found in forests, in uh, you know, in huge jungles and hilly regions. But uh, you know, some snakes that are found in gar garden are extremely harmless. Their diet is only of worms. Their diet is of, of only of worms and insects. Okay. And what is the moral of the poem? The moral of the poem is that whatever happens, snakes are not as dangerous. We should think twice before hurting them, harming them. At least if they are passing by us, passing near us, we should stand quietly and look them. If we will do such, 
then they won't harm us they don't his hit his cells right and lastly what was a fun fact we learned about the snake that where it is found each and every continent except antarctica yes okay now this brings us to the end of this beautiful poem now there is a homework for all of you now you need to collect information about different types of snakes that are found in india and paste pictures in your scrapbook so all those reptiles all those different types of snakes we have flying snakes we have garden snakes we have king cobra we have chameleon snakes to camouflage their color all type of snakes should be found by you researched well on internet and paste their pictures in your scrapbook secondly animals and their food similarly we have discussed uh, in our previous poems also what animals eat what are their food habits so in this we have discussed about snake that it likes to eat insects and worms so there is an activity worksheet for all of you this is a live worksheet actually but i pasted it here for your homework and convenient part so what you need to do is you need to have examples above all like it's a monkey is given so he saying i am a monkey i am a like banana i eat banana so similarly what does mouse eat what does a rabbit eats what does a cat eat and what does a bear eat so similarly you need to find some information about these pets and then write and fill this activity worksheet okay so i hope you are very well thorough and understood the explanation of this poem through this video if you feel free that this, there is any word any phrase metaphor any rhyming scheme which you are not able to understand please it's my request students please feel free to comment in the chat box i'll be always there for uh, you know trying to clear your doubts and uh, my advice is keep on learning keep on studying okay and please like share and subscribe my videos for better and more educational videos Keep learning take care bye bye study hard and enjoy